before we get down to it, a quick reminder that if you want things in your inbox, we'll put things in your inbox with the Hump Day News newsletter. It's a regular wrap-up of coverage past and content to come with links, tips, taters, and tots served up fresh, nice, and hot. And if you're subscribed to the newsletter but not signed up for The Backyard, shame on you. The Backyard is a members-only area at Hump Day News where you'll find all that's best and bizarre at HDN. We've got Mappily Power Rankings, letters from the editor, our in-cell advice column, and more. Sign up at the Hump Day News to log in and enjoy. In this episode, we welcome Ted Chase, editor at QRO Magazine. This is one of four episodes that he'll be contributing to at our Humpcast. Uh, so please have a listen. All right, we welcome to the Humpcast uh, Ted Chase. He's a writer, photographer, editor, and impresario <laughs> at QRO Magazine, uh, based in New York City. He's a music maven who fills his days in investigating the depth. Of the All right, so so Grammys, Academy Awards, Golden Globes, whatever it is, they do year-end lists too. So let's do. You know, we're not going to list it out. You can go to QRO Magazine if you want to see their 2022 top albums they did both contributor lists um of individual contributors and a site-wide list uh, you can check that out uh hump day news also has its own list but ted and i today are just going to pick out right now um maybe a few albums that we really enjoyed and want to highlight for uh whatever reason maybe we'll say um ted do you want to get the ball rolling and just go back and forth um yeah i mean the first one was probably my i think was my number one was um certain the buzz band wet leg with their band, their self-titled record. I mean, they were they first burst out in actually it was the end of 2021. Um, I actually give credit, it was actually my sister who told me about them, and she's it was sort of random, but then yes, all these people like every people in the music business were buzzing about them. I remember seeing them at the very December, and it was, you know, at Mercury Lounge, which is not a big place, it but it's for, it's for a lot of industry shows, and it was completely packed to the gills. They've done other shows that have been completely packed. They did one just last December where it was completely packed. And they're from they're from the UK. They're from the Isle of Wight. Um, just two women. Um, they had, had a hit with this catchy song, Chase Lounge. And they've had a few other ones that were mm. hits. And the record came out, I guess it was April of um, 2022. I remember I saw them at South by Southwest, uh, where they had played a bunch of shows and, again, packed. Um they were really reminding me of sort of the fun sort of not actually reminded me of the fun, like all nineties bands that were sort of um, like what I would think of was like when the breeders put out um, last splash, that's where it's sort of, it's mm -hmm. that, that's that feel like not necessarily. Um, and, uh, and it was just, it was sort of a refreshing breath of fresh air. Um, and um, yeah. And that they really lived up to it because there was certainly a lot of hype and, you know, whenever, you know, and they're, you know, in their twenties, you know, whenever you're, they get hyped before the record comes out. It's like, is it really going to live up to it? I feel like I hear about less and less of those bands. Like that. Oh yeah, like yeah, that was the thing. It was in a way they were like almost a throwback in that way. Like they're the yeah. buzz bands. and especially if you might have like a buzz single, mm -hmm. like you hear something that like goes around, and then it's like, oh yeah, that was like that day's like buzz single. Um, right. Like people are just so worn down by. I don't know, just the grind of new content that they can yeah. instantly get on Spotify or whatever. The idea yeah, yeah. of like and someone breaking out. Yeah. And it's and I think because it's I remember it was a thing, this was years ago, it was New York Times said about it was about CMJ, which is um festival in Rhyme. Um, it's never been easier to get your music out there, but it's never been harder to make money off it. Cause that's another right. thing. You can get buzzed and then it's like, what is that bot that in a I've been having this conversation with uh musicians for years that it's not necessarily one that they love to hear. It's like Musicians will, yes, complain about how it's hard to, you know, m monetize their music and, you know, yeah. not just to break even. And that's so yeah. true. But it's also easier to get. Yeah, yeah. You heard than ever before. Yeah. So something seems like it's got to give between those two. If yeah, so it's weird. I mean, there's just a lot more of more on the market. There's always new people coming in. I mean, it's funny because I've been talking about albums. Albums in some way, you know, are almost you've talked you, you wonder about year-end list what about albums just as a concept right um, I, I mean and it's there's there's still because you know obviously they've been they're not moored by the physical reality though people still sell those things you can certainly um certainly do that and with vinyl and stuff being but um just that the single can come up and then 
people are like, oh yeah, okay, that was that single. And then how do you, you know, you really have to have, like, I remember when, like, when Little Nas X came up with Old Town Road or Old, um, mm-hmm. that was like, that was one of the few, like, okay, that was a big Well, that song. is an extreme example. That is yeah, I mean, that's, that's the extreme. That's will that's, make that's, an entire career on one song. Yeah, yeah. And I not mean, even be considered a one-hit wonder in that sense. It's yeah, like, he's, he put it's, out like that's, and... it's kind of post one-hit wonder because yeah. he is, like, renovating and renewing the song with all these different remixes. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, that's the other thing, because now you can do these remixes, and then you can get other famous people to do remixes or, like, join in on your thing, and you, mm-hmm. or you can remix other people's things. Yeah. Um, it's almost becoming a, I mean, he's, he's become also just with his visual appearance in the videos, you know, he became sort of a celebrity in that, um, that way, you know, but so then he could, you know, appear on commercials and, things, you know, I mean, different, but anyway. Right, but, okay. But, yeah, wet but, leg. But wet, wet leg, leg. It, was, it was definitely. So I'm, I'm glad you brought that one up because I hadn't heard about that at all. So I was looking forward to you bring that one up. Let me throw one your way. Um, and I, I chose to, um, uh from the list that i gave to qro as a contributor um makaya mccraven and twin let me talk about makaya mccraven real quick so here's a tagline from uh the album review makaya mccraven makes the old new again with soulful and cinematic uh with the soulful and cinematic lp in these times so that's the record in these times and i would call him a jazz musician um but he's sort of jazz musician in 2022 2023 who's internalized and assimilated uh, a lot of different styles of music including hip-hop and you hear a very sort of beats forward um style of jazz and it's not so much um uh in the sense of those uh you know um hip hop uh, meets jazz meets dj um uh experiments that you heard back in i don't know the 90s or aughts like us 3 you remember yeah, us yeah. 3 yeah um it, but it's it's more um live like he mixes the stuff live he plays mm-hmm. music, musical instruments live it's a live jazz band but it also has a electronic sort of dj flavor when he wants to pull that into the mix um so he's very prolific um performer uh artist um horror um and uh he's currently probably one of the flagship artists on a very prolific label international anthem out of chicago which has been doing a ton of great releases in jazz and experimental music um he's sort of grown almost too big for them yeah um at this point um but this in these times did come out um whether it was a sole release by international anthem or a co-release it was released by international Mm. anthem so highly recommended um but i struggled to say more on it because i do kind of see myself as a rock and roll guy yeah and i don't have like that deep foundation in jazz to be able to say more but i i know what i like and i I like my time of creating jazz can be very i mean especially sort of my I mean, jazz, all of it can be very daunting be, for anyone who isn't steeped in it because, I mean, like like a lot of, I mean, but, you know, also because it has a history that goes back, you know, a century more um, mm. that, uh, and then that they're still doing stuff. Because I know there have been a sort of, I've been noticed, you know, maybe the last 10 years or so, a number of these sort of modern jazz where they're doing those sorts of things like, um, like Kamasi Washington, if you ever heard him? um no there's and where it's just like i think it's also because you can those those sorts of artists getting that you can find your you can get out there more because you know you um it's it's so then sometimes these things can sort of percolate and because it also it takes less to be a like hits or hit single but to be like a to get attention mm. because there's just so many things out there you know you don't have to be the number one song on like the mainstream radio you can be you're talking about sort of like a jazz musician, jazz yeah. scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. or jazz scene or or this, yeah, like what you're talking about with, with um, McRaven, like just sort of hmm. modern. Kind of a hybrid of yeah, sorts. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Then, I would say like the jazz scene is its own world. Yeah. Um, and it's it's one, I mean, you could say this about rock music too. Like there's all these subcultures and uh, 
you could be a huge star within that scene and nobody in mainstream America would have ever yeah. heard of you. It's um, like when you're like the people who are huge stars in Canada that we've never heard of. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Well, you know about them. Uh, yeah. Have yeah. you heard of the Sun Glaciers? I think I've heard the name, but I don't mm. know. Calgary. Calgary. I like to I like to track the the can, Canadian bands that come through Boston, at least uh, in in um because they they've got such a good vibe. I love yeah, I love Canadian yeah. musicians. Um, I'm sure all right, I'll, I'll bounce it back to you, Ted. Uh, hit oh, me with some, um, another one. What was uh um? There is also there are bands like um. I'm gonna give a couple like Spoon and uh, with uh. Lucifer on the sofa and Death Cab for Cuties, um, Asphalt Meadows, that are you know I mean look I'm an all indie music guy, all music guy, bands that you know I mean, it's almost the, I'm the opposite of what like but you know they've been doing it for years for a couple of decades now, and they still release really great records that it could be, and sometimes they get overlooked in terms of because they're not the hot thing. Um, that or you know it's so it's um and yeah and you know and their current record doesn't no you spoon know. death cab for cutie you're talking about some bands with long careers yeah yeah and you know and also they get you know you know obviously they've got their late greats they're sort of you know the stuff that broke through that when you were younger when we were all younger that people are you know more sort of attached to but um uh that but that you know you can still they can still make great records and then obviously they don't change a huge degree just because that's who they you know like anyone that's who they are i mean brad mm -hmm. pitt hasn't changed a huge degree um <laughs> no but it's, it's almost it's in the audience that has come to appreciate him more you know they yeah. see they see more depths in the yeah his, oh, it's, it's you know i mean yeah and actually there is some that like the bands that were sort of maybe a little more crazy when they were younger and they sort of get older and wiser um yeah but yeah, i don't know, know how much they, wiser but well flaming lips strikes me is that it's yeah it's like if you listen to their stuff from the 90s they're kind of doing the alt rock thing yeah. almost and they've changed a lot but they really found their sort of pop center yeah i mean no, it's true some some acts do that where they almost go more i think it's if they maybe want to go more more successful like i remember when death cab went from indie label Barsook to major label Atlantic Records and people were really, I think it was like 2009 people, you know, and this was when that still vaguely mattered. Um, but uh, they were still really able to keep it going and sort of keep the quality up. Uh, I think sometimes, I mean, so yeah, so it's always, and, and sometimes some people get, well, well, you know, a lot of artists, they can, when they get older, they start doing, they get bored with the stuff that you liked that then, so then they start doing different things and you're like, I mean, great for you, but I don't care. Or, uh -huh. or, or they get like two. I like get, that though. I like when I mean, artists are just like, we're moving like, on, like whether you like it or not. It's yeah. Cool. I, mean, I mean, it's, 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 I sort of feel like you can do that in like sort of almost talk about off season. Like you do that between the records, but still, I mean, I mean, no, do whatever you want. Like, but mm -hmm. it's, uh, but just don't expect that. Like, just because you, it's, it's weird. I mean, it's like every record either the fans like it more or you like it more. I mean, just because it's not going to be equal. So, you know, and there's lots of great records that were released because just that was what the person wanted. And, um, but it's also, I think it's fans get older. They one, they have kids that becomes, yeah. then, they start, then they start writing songs about being dads or being like that sort of thing. And they start getting the looking back songs. And also they get better at their instruments, especially if they're successful, they get right that yeah. they can, they, I mean, one big thing I've noticed in the last like 10, 15, I mean, sort of QRO is a lot more, you know, the synthesizer, rise of the synthesizer, because synthesizer, I think, are easier to compose on. Mm. Uh, and so then, but then it's then you can bring, when your band gets more successful, they can bring the extra synthesizers, like someone like uh, Benjamin Gibbard, main man of Death Cat for Cutie. I mean, he always was piano, did piano as well as guitar, but it feels like he can sometimes do more, does more piano certainly live um because then it also becomes a weird thing because piano just doesn't look as good live yeah, as one good. trope i always hear on on some of these more uh longer career artists when they're putting out records uh, they're like this is the best album we've ever produced this is the best album we have ever put out put out because they're they're thinking back to their earlier like successful albums but thinking yeah. about how kind of haphazard they were in, in yeah ways. And, and and they've had so much time to see all the mistakes in it that the, or the six that they perceived mm -hmm. that 
like we find is like sort of endearing or like oh yeah now right. that song faster it's part of the that. reason that people liked it um yeah, and yeah. still do but to them as artist creators they're probably like well yeah. i can i can do better i can make that better yeah um, whether or not no, that's as popular it's, it's usually um, not yeah like i remember just an interview with mentioning we are scientists who just had an album out a couple of weeks ago lobes they've been around since like two early 2000s and they're like oh yeah i must prefer i prefer our albums in reverse chronological order you know you like our you know, I mean, but but their first album was, you know, sort of the one that people remember, you know, and has a but like it's uh, like we still like playing it live, but like I won't put it on the record. I hate having to practice it Um, because, you know, it also is just they get tired of their old songs like because they've heard them a million times. I bet. And I remember um, I forget which band it was. But I was shocked, absolutely shocked to hear that they had to um write down and print the lyrics to their own songs for that they had written 10 to 15 years ago to remember it um yeah. remember the songs because i just didn't know them yeah. um i think i i learned about this in some in high school and i was just was this in my youth? youthful ignorance I, I didn't think that such I think a thing it was, was possible. i remember hearing that when this was Lollapalooza touring festival i think it was a mutual friend of ours saw sonic youth and he could see that like the lyrics were written down like Right. That, I, I I mean, this was also, this was from Fred Bars in high school. Like it's, you know, I mean, they were, and they were, um, you know, and that wasn't even, their songs weren't that old. Like even their like 80s, right. songs, it wasn't, you know, maybe it was a decade or more old, but it wasn't like that old. Um, right. A little older and wiser myself, I sympathize. Like I can't remember like what I did yesterday. Never mind. Like, yeah. 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 Four pages of lyrics, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like I think I've seen like some bands where it's, or it's like they'll know, especially it's also they'll remember the lyrics for some of the songs, but in a lot of a lot, a lot a lot of the other older songs, they're like or or when bands do the tour and album in full, that's a mm. big that's a big thing because it's a way to get the old fans. They'll have to relearn songs that they haven't played in you know, right. 10, twenty years. And you mentioned it's, Sonic Youth; it's especially difficult for them because they were using these weird tunings, oh, and yeah. I, I doubt they were even recording. You know what the the tunings were a lot of the time, or held on yeah, to that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but lyrics, one one quick question: speaking of like long arching career band before we bounce it back and at this point i forget if we're bouncing it to you or me but <laughs> yeah. quick 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 question so speaking of these long uh lasting bands uh dinosaur jr yeah so they are they're a band who that that's changed sort of yet again in their late stage so yeah, now they've also uh, Lou barlow's their... rejoined the band yeah. are well, you a fa are you in favor do you like the new look oh yeah yeah i think their new dinosaur records they've actually been maybe my favorite of those sort of there was this whole trend of 21st century sort of alt reunions that the Pixies started and and like 2004 Coachella and um but I really because yeah because it was that was a weird thing because it was sort of Lou Barlow was kicked out right before they got popular and then Murph was kicked out and then he sort of Jay Mascus the senior guitar sort of finally just sort of gave it up the thing but then they re reunited because they had gotten the rights to their old first first albums or on SST records that there's a whole issues with that label. Um, and then they started putting out new music and yeah. And it's been, um, I mean, talk about the older and wiser. I think it's very like, uh, yeah, they're not the tempestuous youth that used to fight, fight each other. Um, no. And you I mean, would also, hope I that they would have gotten over that. Yeah. And, and also I think they're, you know, it's easier. They're not touring all in one van that it's, it's a little. The, right. You know, it's a right. little. I just saw them at the house of blues Boston. They're good, but. Their setup is very much on the stage setup of, you know, uh, an older yeah. trio of musicians who have played a lot apart from each other. They're like 40 feet away from each other on stage. So, and, some and of Jay that Maskus is... is surrounded by yeah. just like this, this wall of yeah, speakers. Yeah, circle of amps. Um, some of that is also there are only three of them and they're playing large stages. And, you know, and then they can also, because then they, one cool thing is then they can pull Murph, the drummer, forward which a lot of times, you know, in even a four piece, they're on a riser in the back, but Murph, mm. are, you know, but then it's, so then it, then it becomes almost a lot. So three of them a line. I mean, but that I think is just as much just they're playing large places and they're yeah. not amps and they're a loud band. I mean, it's. They, and they've got some weird stage props, like sort of half. Oh yeah. Like yeah. That's, that's. What is yeah. that? Have you seen that? Yeah. I think that's something that's actually kept through. If you see like from like their album art and stuff. Yeah. And I think they just like. I wouldn't be surprised if it was actually a fan made that and like sent it to them or something. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of, I mean, cause it's, yeah, cause the kind of thing you could make. And then they were just like, this is cool. So we just put this up for a thing or like, um, 
and it's just uh and it's a way to sort of because they don't certainly move around that much on stage it's um i think the thing is ending it is it is ted so um we're winding down with less than a minute on our, our free zoom but we can just fire up another one are you game to keep going sure yeah 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 all right so let's wind it i'll just uh end it here and let's uh when we continue um yeah, yeah, it would be uh, yeah, let's go back. All right, Ted, we're at less than a, a minute. Okay, yeah. Um we don't need to go anymore. <laughs> like, all right. I want to uh, thank you uh for joining Humpcast uh on our inaugural effort um as a kind of uh collaboration. I hope to have you back again uh to talk more music uh, at another time. Sure. Thanks for joining. Visit us at the site at humpday.news for good junk in art, politics, sports, and culture. Follow us on our socials, subscribe to the newsletter, sign up for the backyard, and for the love of God, remember, every day is hump day.